Hello, Duquesne basketball fans. Thanks for finding us. Tim Benz with you on the UPMC Duquesne Basketball Coaches Show. Doing this remotely, as is the new normal for now. Can't wait to get back into our broadcast studio and can't wait to see college basketball take off in 2020, 2021. A lot of people have worked very hard to get this far for the Duquesne program and across the NCAA for basketball at large in the A-10 and Keith Dambrot will join us to talk about those efforts and talk about the team he has coming back to the bluff after a 21-win season a year ago. Eight returning players from that talented roster of 2019-2020. In fact, let's look back at the highlights from last year as Sherwin-Williams is painting a picture of victory. Here come the Dukes. Carey right down the middle. Wanted to space out the minutes for Carey. Nice. Good drive. Better feed. Dunk for Weathers. The bench contribution coming for Duquesne. Reaching the steal is Norman. He'll get involved again. Open court. Norman oh. flushes it home. Oh. Looking for a screen from Steele. He gets it. Don Martin to the baseline, floater, got it. Wow. Kelly's defense here in the second half, Ellis. Turnover, yeah. Austin with the steal, has Don Martin in front, lays it off the backboard, and Austin dunks it home. They read each other perfectly in that transition chance. Carey waves off the steel screen, goes right to the basket. That's a tough play by Sincere Carey, all the way to the rim. And joining us right now is the man who coached those Duquesne Dukes to 21 victories last season. It's Keith Dambron. He's brought to us by Clearway Energy. Keith, a little bit different this year doing the UPMC Coaches Show, but it's great to see you however we can see you. Hey, we'll do whatever. We have to be light on our feet this year. We have to be flexible, and we're all doing things differently, aren't we? Yeah, we are, and that goes for your schedule as well. I know at the time that we're speaking, you are set to take part in the Wade Houston tournament in Louisville at the KFC Yum Center. A pretty good tournament assembled there. Uh, hopefully, that gets off on the right foot and hopefully you guys are able to participate in that. Um, can you take us through the scheduling situation fluid though it may be and take a little time to talk about what you might face in Louisville? Well, you know, uh, about half the division one teams have had shutdowns because of COVID. So right now in Louisville, we'll have, uh, 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 UNCG Winthrop and Arkansas Little Rock, and obviously, we're still uh, looking in Indianapolis at Cincinnati and uh, Loyola Chicago, but Loyola Chicago has been shut down. So we're not sure on anything, really. But all we can do is schedule the games, get our team ready to play, and then see what happens. In that highlight package that we just rolled, Keith, there are a lot of familiar faces that will be back on your team this year. Eight returning players, in fact, as a coach who is going through these very – uncertain circumstances one certainty is you, you know these players you've known them for a long time very familiar roster can you speak to us about how that might give your team a bit of an advantage given the truncated practice time and the jagged nature of this offseason well those guys have been in a lot of big ball games Tim I mean they they've uh, played consistently uh, they've played a lot of basketball they've they've won games in the Atlantic 10. They've been in a lot of close games. They're very experienced and uh, they've shown they can be good players. I think the biggest difficulty is who adjusts the quickest to the uh, small practice time, who's in the best condition. Uh, that probably concerns me the most is just conditioning. And then the second thing is, is uh, how our young guys develop because of this, uh, you know, not having a full practice season, not uh, getting a lot of preseason games and exhibition games and scrimmages to really understand what we're trying to do. So those are the things that concern me the most. 
One thing that I've noticed in watching the sports that have rebooted is familiarity does seem to breed results with these circumstances. Like, you know, the Steelers have a very familiar roster and coaching staff They're at the time that we're talking off to a nine and zero start, a lot of familiarity on the Dodgers. They came back and won the world series, a lot of familiarity with the Tampa Bay lightning. Uh, they went all the way to the Stanley cup. Um, you know, uh, basketball is a little different with your guy, LeBron, but he's LeBron. He's going to make things. The only thing familiar with him is winning. So, <laughs> um, that's a little bit of a different dynamic, but there does seem to be some tangible results to having a veteran roster return given the strange setup that everybody is going through in all sports. Well, and then you look at, you know, the Steelers and uh, the Lakers who I'm most familiar with, you're talking about great leaders. You know, you're talking about Ben Roethlisberger, who's won multiple Super Bowls and, and Mike Tomlin, who's never had a losing season. And then you're talking about LeBron, who's the ultimate winner as well. So, you know, that's probably the biggest thing is who understands their situation the best, who's mature enough to take advantage uh, of other people's immaturities and who really cares about winning. And I think that that tells a lot about this COVID situation that we're in right now. Well, Keith, let's get to some of those players specifically and uh, how they might grow, develop, and get even better this year. And let's start with Marcus Weathers, who took a lot of strides a season ago, second team all A-10 on the preseason polling. Um, where did he get – where did he improve the most last year, and where can he take even another step forward this season? Well, I think first and foremost, for him to really take the next step, he has to get in better and better and better condition. I think that's one of his weakest areas. And I think if he can improve that motor, I think he'll play even better than he did last year. Uh, I think the other thing that really helped him last year is he really worked at, at getting to where his bread was buttered. And that's driving to the rim, getting to the rim, getting close to the basket, and then shooting open shots when he was open. I think that's what he really did a great job of. And I think, you know, he became a go-to guy in this league that a lot of people in this league really didn't know what to do with. Yeah, and I noticed that in speaking with opposing coaches from across the league and opposing coaches that came in from your non-conference season two as Marcus started to develop fairly quickly a year ago. And they talked about the explosion that was there in his game. And listening to you talk right now, it sounds like if the better conditioning melds with that, it's more of that for 40 minutes as opposed to in pops. Is that what you're getting at? Yeah, I think, you know, the better shape he can get in uh, – the more that he takes care of himself off the court, he spends time on his conditioning, then you'll see more burst, more burst, more burst. And pretty soon you got a guy, instead of bursting for five minutes of the whole game, you're, you're bursting for 15 minutes of the game. And now you really have something that's uh, a load for anybody to handle. How about Michael Hughes? Uh, this is a guy who conditioning was a big part of his game when he first joined up with you before he made the transfer to Duquesne. Has he managed to maintain that during this off season as he had prior? Well, I think that's the biggest challenge for everyone. You know, nobody could get anywhere in the spring. And then our summer was cut, cut short till we didn't start till the middle of July. So everybody's pretty much playing catch up in regards to uh, being in tip top condition. But Michael's shown that he can be, a high level player in a variety of different ways. His touch around the rim is really good, both right and left hand. He can even step out and shoot the ball, you know, from the three line and uh, be pretty consistent out there. And defensively, he steals the ball and blocks shots with the best of them in the league. So you're talking about a guy that's multi-dimensional. And again, I'm going to use the same, uh, uh, same thought process with him as I did with Marcus, the better shape he can be in, the more often you will see that. He's a guy who, as I recall, towards the end of last season, you were really uh, trumpeting for a little bit more attention when it comes to league honors, specifically on the defensive end of the ball. Well, he's an ornery guy, you know, and a little bit abrasive at times. So a lot of people in the league really don't care for him. Uh, he's one of those guys that you like having on your team, but you don't like so much uh, playing against guys like that. So, listen, he was number eight in the country of block shots, led the Atlantic 10 and block shots in the conference. And then he was top 10 in the league in steals. So uh, he either he's really bad when uh, in other areas defensively, or this league has some great defensive players. Sincere Carey, how did you evaluate his sophomore season? And what have you spoken to him about this off season so that he can make even more of an impact as a junior? The biggest thing we've talked to with Sincere about is building 
his game from the defensive end to the offensive end, uh, which is a little bit uh, it's a little bit different than how young people view it now, you know. But we feel like he can be special defensively, and I felt like his freshman year he was a little bit more defensive oriented than offensive oriented. And he had a terrific year last year, but I think, you know, if he builds it from that defensive end to the offensive end, uh, he could take another jump. For all the talent that you are returning, one guy that you lost that contributed quite a bit last year was Bailey Steele. How do you replace his minutes? Well, Rotroff, Austin Rotroff is more healthy than he was last year. And actually, Austin started to play well at the end of last year once he got his feet underneath him a little bit and got a little healthier, you know, from that knee surgery. So we feel like that we can use Austin much like we did uh, with Bailey. He's in terrific shape. His body looks terrific. He's really worked hard at his game. And so we, we feel like we can play big at times with Mike Hughes and Austin. We can play Austin behind Mike Hughes. And, uh, you know, it gives us good flexibility. Uh, how about Amari Kelly? Well, I think Amari's in a similar situation to Austin, what, how Austin was last year. You know, he tweaked his knee about – three quarters of the way through last year again after having knee surgery later than Austin did. So he's just playing catch up. And so as the season goes on, I think he'll play better and better and give us a, a, another valuable guy inside. It was a difficult season for Maceo Austin uh, with a death in the family away from the court. How did you feel his freshman campaign went? Did you get what you were thinking you were getting from Maceo as a player? And uh, is this the proverbial, Biggest step is the first step between freshman and sophomore sensation for Maceo. Well, look, when you go through what he went through, that was a very difficult time for him. And up until that point, he was having a terrific year. And obviously, emotionally, that took a lot out of him and was really hard on our team as a whole uh, because he's a very well-liked guy. So I think he handled it like a champion. Uh, he obviously didn't play as well as he did earlier in the year, which – I don't know if anybody could have gone through what he went through. So we feel like he's going to have a good year. He understands our system well. He's made improvements with his, uh, his body, and uh, we feel like he'll be what he should be. Two very familiar names uh, we've gotten to know in the backcourt, Tavian Dunmartin and Lamar Norman. How do you view their roles this season? Well, let's start with Lamar. I think uh, Lamar's been one of our most consistent guys throughout the summer and the fall. Uh, He's really starting to feel comfortable. Uh, he's really improved defensively. Uh, we continue to, to try to tell him, look, you're more than just a guy that can shoot the ball, you know, try to get downhill and get to the rim. You're a really good athlete. And he's consistent because he's a consistent person. He's really a great young man. And so we feel like he'll have a, another good year and probably take another jump. Tavian Dunn Martin really is a freak. He's a guy that at five foot eight and 130 pounds, really shouldn't even be a division one basketball player, but he's one of the most explosive scorers in the A-10 and he can handle the ball and pass the ball and also be a pass defensively. So, you know, he's a guy that I think if he continues to put more and more time in, could have a really uh, great senior year. There are nine new names on your roster. I know there's lots of people coming back, but as far as the new guys go with what you outlined before, the lack of practice time, uh, the lack of just uh, knowing the system, et cetera. Uh, who amongst this new crop of players that you have might be somebody that can contribute when called upon? Well, I think there's four or five of them right now that can really help us. It's just going to be a matter of opportunity, uh, injuries, uh, who plays well early, who grasps the system the quickest, and most importantly, who can defend at the collegiate level uh, right away. So, it's a little bit early yet to know that. And again, we don't have a lot of experiment time this year comparative to what we've had in the past. So that's the unfortunate thing for them. Last thing, Keith, I, I wonder if for everything that's kind of gone off the rails here in 2020 for all of us and, and how you as coaches across the NCAA have had to adjust your process, your lives, Recruiting is one thing I wanted to ask you about. I know um, the 2021-2022 recruiting classes started to t take shape for you. Uh, Andy Barba, uh, recruit that you got from Cleveland, is signed. How has this part of the process been for you and your staff, recruiting in the pandemic? Well, it's not really like how I like to do it. Uh, you know, I've made my living with undervalued guys and really making great judgments on guys, both uh, – both, uh, uh, physically and mentally. And so like, this is much harder now 
uh, Andy's the guy that I've seen play a lot as a sophomore, junior and senior. So this one wasn't as difficult for us, although he's made huge improvement over the last probably three or four months. Uh, so it's not good for us really, but again, everybody's kind of in the same boat, but like I'm a little bit more old school. So we just have to make it work. What do you think of the building? How's it taking shape? Give me an update. Well, it'll be a good building. I think it'll be a good building. It'll be a unique building. It'll be nice sized in the sense that it'll be an angry building. It'll be a building that people won't like to come to. And, you know, as long as we get the fans in there, which we should, I think it'll be a big home court advantage, which we definitely need. During the COVID era, Keith, I'm four miles away. I feel like I need a passport to get uptown, but I can't wait to see it when it's ready to go. Well, Tim, this is kind of like fantasy basketball right now. We don't really know what's going to come next. <laughs> and we don't really know uh, how it's all going to end, but really all we can do is just prepare and do the very best we can every single day. Keith, thanks. I can't wait to see your team on the floor again this year. Appreciate the time very much. Glad we could do this uh, in this format and hopefully get to be with each other in the studio soon. Can't wait to see your team out there. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Tim. All right, Keith Danbrot, head coach of the Duke Kane Dukes, brought to us by Clearway Energy. Up next, one of the aforementioned Dukes, it's Austin Rochoff. He's going to join us. Brought to us by the Academy Schools. Here's a look at some of Austin's highlights. His second assist early in the game here for three. Rotroff, elevator up. Jam it off the bounce to the rim, rejected. Everything that's good about college basketball. Perry with the shot clock down to five. Rotroff, what a find. Down to nine. Rotroff has had the big first half over a shooting. Score it in the foul. Now a chance to talk to Austin Rotroff here on the Duquesne University Coaches Show brought to you by UPMC. Austin, great to see you again. I know it's not in person, but how are you and your teammates feeling about getting the season going under these strange circumstances? Uh, thanks. It's great to be here. Um, we're just trying to prepare for a, a business as usual season. Um, Team's been looking good so far. We've just been trying to get our practices in and, and just get everybody ready for uh, next week. We were speaking with Keith Dambrot before you joined us, and he talked about how difficult it has been for guys to stay in shape, stay in condition. You're not in your usual surroundings with all the trainers around, and you probably had to improvise some of your ability to stay in shape. But he also pointed out how good of a job you personally are doing. How have you managed to do that? Um, just trying to get creative with it, um, you know, over quarantine, just finding different ways to, to get out and, um, you know, better myself and um, get my knee back to 100% and, and get my body right, get my diet right. Um, so it's, it's been um, a challenge, but it's been a fun challenge getting to try new things and, and learn more stuff about uh, what you can do. I was going to ask you about that, the knee versus, you know, everything else, like you said, the diet, the rest of your body. Do you find that at this stage of your recovery from the ACL surgery that the knee still needs the most attention or is it just kind of part of the process at this point? Um, at this point, it's part of the process. Um, last year definitely needed a lot of attention, um, you know, continuing to get it stronger, but now I'm, I'm pretty much feeling hundred um, percent. So, you know, I never worry about it. It's, it's feeling, it's feeling really good out there. So. Um, it's pretty much just, just part of the, the whole thing right now. One of the advantages of the team having Bailey Steele last year was he was able to uh, soak up a lot of minutes for Michael Hughes and, and provide a presence in, inside with size. He could also pop out and hit shots from distance. And I felt like it was a perfect bridge to allow you to work your way back into shape. Is that how you viewed it as well? And can you kind of take that role that Bailey had a season ago? Uh, yeah, I, I think what you're saying is true. Um, <clears throat> Bailey helped us a lot, um, you know, on the court. And obviously he was he was uh, my close friend and my roommate on the road off the court. Um, so I learned a lot from just his habits, his work ethic. Um, he took his his diet very seriously, his recovery. Um, so I just learned a lot um, from him that I think has helped me over the past year, like over the quarantine. Um, and yeah, I think um, I think he's he leaves a big spot to be replaced on the team. But I think um you know, hopefully I'll be able to, to uh, produce a little bit like that. And as well with Amari coming back too, we can kind of uh, fill that gap. Now you're staying in touch with him. Is he playing in Portugal? Is that what I saw last? Um, he's in Poland. Yeah. Poland. Okay. 
you staying in touch with him and, and how's his game going over there? Um, he's doing pretty well. He's, he's playing pretty well over there. I, I text him, uh, text with him back and forth a couple of times a week and just see how he's doing, but yeah, he's enjoying it. He's playing well over there. I know that when Keith was on earlier, he was speaking about Amari Kelly, another one of the big men for Duquesne trying to come back from injury as well. And, uh, sort of alluded to he might be where you were a season ago, trying to play catch up as the calendar comes along. Um, how have you and Amari bonded over this situation and uh, how can you give him some encouragement? Um, yeah, we spent a lot of time together, especially when um, last summer when we were going to therapy together, we go with the same therapist. Um, so we've been kind of able to see each other's progression through this whole thing. Um, and you can tell that, you know, Amari's going to be a really good player. His skill is there right now. It's just a matter of time before he gets his, his body back to his usual self and, and gets his explosiveness back. But um, yeah, he's going to help us a lot. When we have had an opportunity to speak with all of you guys, whether it's at the 810 Media Day or in Zoom sessions like this, one recurring theme is at least when games do start, there are going to be eight guys who know how to hit the ground running with one another. Um, you know, you're coming back and a different form and a different role than you were a year ago, but a lot of the other guys are, are pretty much playing exactly the same kind of role that they had back in 2019, 2020. I would imagine there's a sense of comfort there that perhaps even some good teams in the A-10 don't have coming back from a year ago. Yeah, for sure. Obviously we have a really good core um, returning and all of our freshmen um, can play just a matter of time before you know they learn the defensive schemes the in and outs of, of the college game. But yeah, we got a lot of freshmen that can play. Um, and it obviously gives us a, a good sense of um, comfort that we have, you know, the starting five returning and, and a really good core of, of guys. Well, Austin, thank you so much for taking some time to join us. Really do appreciate it. Wish you the best of luck moving forward and can't wait to see your team back out there again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Time now to go behind the numbers brought to you by Schneider Downs. The Dukes, who have exceeded their preseason prediction in each of their first three seasons with Keith Dambrot, were picked to finish fifth in the 2020-2021 Atlantic 10 preseason poll. It's the highest a Duquesne team has appeared in the preseason poll since 2010, when the Dukes returned four starters from a team that advanced to the 2009 Atlantic 10 championship final game and were also picked to finish fifth. In addition, both Marcus Weathers and Sincere Carey were named preseason All-Atlantic 10 making the first time since 2010 when Damian Saunders and Bill Clark were named that DU has placed multiple players on the A-10's preseason team. That'll do it for this edition, this premier edition of the 2020-2021 UPMC Duquesne University Coaches Show. We will be back again on December 3rd for a look at the women's team with women's coach Dan Burt and back again for another look at the men's team on December the 17th with head coach Keith Dambrot. Until then, thanks a lot for joining us on the UPMC Duquesne University Basketball Coaches Show.